Hi, everybody. Yeah, we can make a theme song. We on could. a little help. <laughs> for a little help. All right. That a could little be help. our first Ableton project. Is it time for an Ableton project already? Oh, I mean, boy. I think we need to learn a little bit more about it, but... All right. Uh, a little help. A little help is on. It's the show where we get you, you know, offer a little help with these yeah. tools that we use in the house. Exactly. And we tour it. And sometimes people send us questions or things for feedback. Do we have any of those today or... Um, not quite not yet. Not quite. I'm hitting up our Discord to see what they're doing. Looks like a bunch of video gaming dudes. Video gaming dudes. Well, we have been... Uh, hey, we got Dogen in the chat now. Oh. Dogen 3. Yeah, just letting everyone file in for a minute. But what are we going to talk about today? Uh, let's talk about how we fix the audio problems that we had a second. <laughs> <laughs> how do how do we fix those audio problems? I'm pretty sure it was the sample rate issue. Was it? it? Yes, I switched it from 44.1 to 44.8, and it seems to be fine. Interesting. That is that something related to huh? 48? 48. 48. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. 48. Is that something related to HDMI and the the streaming? technology we have quite possibly um, i'm thinking because we have um a hdmi splitter that supports like mm. arc like surround sound setups um it'll probably be looking for higher quality audio as well nice and maybe up converting a lower signal will cause artifacting sweet this is a guess this is not a for sure well it looks like our friends are joining the chat now I want to join Dogen, the chat. We've got Dogen, we've got Tuke, I see Garion coming in. Good. And Sir Garbage Truck. Sounds like a regular old set. Yeah. Hey, where did we leave off last week? What the heck were we doing? Well, we were talking about some of the basic uh, warping and clip tools. We talked a little bit about trigger modes, mm. right? That's uh, right. Now, did we go? Did we go full on with warping at all, or um, warping I think we like were, audios? We were definitely edging toward it. We did an example of warping. We spent a good amount of time in 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 launch types. The whole like, let's get like an audio clip up, kind of review. I don't know something, something, anything. Do I have like snack? It's a good loop. Oh, snack loop. Yeah. Oh yeah, were we going to... Um, Actually, I have the project. I could open that. Yeah, let's look at the snack time stems. For everyone watching Small Window, uh, I wrote a little theme for snack time that involves Chiyoko singing about snacks. So we have different stems, different isolated tracks. Yeah, and I created, you created a small a arrangement just to make it loop. Something kind of for BGM mode, right? Mm-hmm. So we had the intro. I took the stems from the intro. And it goes like this. Nice. So yes. Gary asks, what are the what is the difference between source and stems? Between source and stems? Yeah. So source audio could be pretty much any type of audio mm. uh, at its um, at its base level, right? Um, yeah. It might not be affected or something like that. But source audio might just be a more generic term. Stems in this case are uh, each one of these prints of audio uh, is a stem. So when you take a track you're working on and you print just that track to audio for mixing purposes, usually, yeah. um, that's called a stem. And so this blue line and the blue line below it and the blue line below that, each one of those is a different stem. Like the Glockens feel. Yeah, and those... Exactly. It's just a stem by itself. But it's useful for when I want to add different effects to each of these channels, each of these stems. And kind of, you know, change their range. I actually haven't done really much of anything to these stems. Mm -hmm. Tommy already mixed them. I just looped them and put my generic master enhancer thing <laughs> to kind of bump it out. 
to increase the low and the high end as we can see here and also two limiters because I'm shameless and I'm probably doing it wrong but I found a stack that I like and I kind of save that as a preset and go on with my life that's um yeah sometimes I'll make a new one when I find new tools or think about a different like quality mm -hmm. of audio that I'm trying to to create if I wanted to do that with any device in Ableton, um, these generic containers for devices are instrument racks and drum racks, audio effect racks, these guys. An audio effect rack is just an empty little bypass, like you can see uh, right here. Audio comes in on one side and goes out the other side. And if I wanted to do anything crazy to it like I want to have a I don't know a bit reduction or make it mono or what have you mono is really straightforward we just take the width of a utility and put it to zero so now all of that stereo effects are gone um, or stereo imaging there's another way to do this but this says what uh, I don't want to go into specific I don't go into specific devices um, cause there are a lot more videos that do a way better job than I ever will on that. But on each device in Ableton, there's this little disc thing. When I click on that, inside of the user library presets for that device, we can get a preset for our audio effect rack. Um, if I press enter, it'll just stick with that name. You can right click to rename it or press command or control R. And that's it. Maybe something that describes it, like <laughs> make mono, even though it really doesn't do anything. Um, that that is a, that is a process. Um, let's see. So you want to go back to uh, warp modes, launch types. Like, how do we deal with? Oh man, I learned a really cool workflow thing the other day. Mm -hmm. Completely, completely. Uh, so we've been talking a lot about differences between. Uh, arrangement view and session view, right? But um, what I found, or what I saw in a video, what I, what I learned recently is that if I have a section like here that I want to loop it by pressing Command L or this little loop buddy, um, I can go over here, and this will show me the position of this, of like each of those clips in that track. The really neat thing to do with this is play an instrument into this section. So, like, I don't know. Just give me anything. What is a... Uh, Alright, give me a regular operator. Let's do, like, a, as an example. If I don't know the snack time melody, I'll plug my MIDI in. Right? So I can actually, while that's playing, I can do different takes into the arrangement view. Nice. Right. And now, if I like that part of that take or any of those things, like, I don't know. It's all slow. We can actually kind of hi you know meld these two parts together. So I can take that take that I like and kind of slice that into this region that I'm looping. Mm -hmm. And that really helps for more composerly type work um, that I see Jake do often, where he'll have a section kind of cued, and then he'll hit record and kind of punch in a part like. Right? And that will, you know, that sometimes is a process that takes quite a few, quite a few takes in the same region, um, especially if you're kind of exploring an idea. And having a section that's looped helps that quite a bit. Also, I don't, well, no, I do have it pretty well times. Let's see, I need to get my chat going. 
This week, everyone should check out Cyberspace 4141. <laughs> um, by a crazy composer that we have around. Who is here? Who's here? Oh. In our chat? Yeah. Uh, they made it harder to see that, but... Really? Well, I just made it more annoying. All right. But it looks like we've got Cat Muller on board. Alex, Alexi DM, Cat Muller, Dogen3, Gary and SE, Jediger Music, Shido Sai, Sir Garbage Truck, and Yoder. So, Ooh. we got a good, got a good group here. Uh, do you guys have any questions right now that you'd like, anything you'd like to see us take a look at in this software today? Do you mind? Might just go ahead. Let's let's play with the vocal stems if you want. Sure. I'd love to see what Ableton can do in terms of effects, in terms of looping or triggering around maybe instead of something that's being looped, something that might have a, a unique audio quality to it, right? All right. Let's make a new project, not save this one. Sure. And I want to go into... Where, are I? where do I put my stems? Probably into documents. Hopefully nothing crazy pops up. Mint potion, snack time, stems. Hey. So let me pull up my Q channel here so you can hear that's the full version. If you watch the show, is this the vocal only? Oh, that's cool. Let's so use that's that. Just the, that's just the text tone. Right, right. So is this, let's use with the hit. Well, it's under the, that's the track. Oh yeah, the stems are in the here. the stems are in there. So let's I did do a little text, a text message version of the snack time. Oh, is that what that is? Tone. Is that like a Vocaloid or? Play what you just triggered. No. It sounds like a person. Yeah, it's Chioko. <laughs> yes. It's, it's like the three Chioko voices mixed together. I did a, I did the low voices too on the, on the harmonies. Oh, so right, right. Oh, it's a really good blend. So this is this me, is right? You. Yeah. Wow. Uh, see something with that. And then this. And that's uh, One more time. that's the. What are these? What do these words mean? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I see. And then there's. Also, more vocal harmony at the end. Three part, it looks like. Oh, for the stab. So, how do you feel about naming conventions for each of these stems? Like, do you have a method that you learned, or...? I really just try to name them based on um, what's going to be as clear as possible. Some of these didn't come out the way I wanted them to anyway. Okay. Like that inst2, inst3. Um, but these actually just came out based on... These came out based on what... Uh, I think I batch exported these. So these were done by the program, which was Logic. Okay, okay. So when importing a group of files that have the same timing, if you drag it normally, they'll drag them in sequence. If I press Command then I can drag them all into their own track. Oh, that's really nice. Um, and that also works in this view. Now this is where you'd want to drag them all at once. Right. In this view, horizontally. In the other view, you'd want to stack them vertically right. to get a mix out of them. So it's pretty interesting. But the, uh, the keyboard command is the same. Or control on PC, command on cool. uh, Mac OS. Very cool. Now I have those all selected. They will all ring out sound snack time together eventually. Mm -hmm. Snack time. So that's cool. Um, what are weird things we can do with vocals? We have a lot of options here. Um, one thing I think is, of course, sampling them to make something granular. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess anyone using like live, any kind of sampler? I'm going to use something simpler than a sampler called Simpler. I can, thanks, dude. Um, I'm going <coughs> to take our first example and drag that sample into here. Um, this has a kind of simple editor. And how about I arm that track as well. Not fine. Not fine. 
cool um this creates this is potentially a lot of great effects at once but classic i want to find like the looping mode i want to find there we go this guy and so if i go really really far down into something that's more of a tone even further so I don't even have that transient I don't even have that hit is there a way to get rid of zero crossing you know get what oh I don't know I mean one way to fake that is to use this filter but zero crossing is like where the sample starts, mm. right? That's actually really lucky. If it starts and ends um, right here where the signal crosses, like the side is positive, the top half, the bottom half of that is negative. For the way that uh, digital audio works and really sounds in most cases, what is this? Um, or I guess sound coming through speakers. It's the smallest amount that I can actually do that. So I have something that kind of resembles an instrument. Let's make that fall off a little more gentle. Let's get something like this going. Hmm. Where do I want that LFO to go? To volume? The dog is very interested. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle is really digging this sound. <laughs> cool. So. That's one thing that I like to do with vocals, is make some kind of granular synthesizer. I have granular. Maybe. This thing? So, let's get even crazier. Granular 2, if you have Max for Live, <clears throat> that's uh, pretty intense. I'll also use the same sample and find a similar region, maybe the snack part instead of the time part. So granular, we could talk about methods of synthesis all day, but it's resampling and kind of shuffling these different areas. And I can actually change... Oh, this is a beautiful thing. I want a little bit smoother... Uh, like grain steps. Mm -hmm. uh. Ooh. Go back to the grain. So this is a pretty powerful granular synthesizer. Yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it has a bunch of different ways for spraying and scanning. Like, that's beautiful. I would love to, like, blow that up to, like, a huge, huge, huge sound. Um, let's see. What is this? Oh, you could do a live input grab. I don't, I don't, I don't want. Symmetrical spray. But yeah, something with chorus, something with that. Anyway, that is, so that's one thing we could do with these. Another thing is like, um, 
using a like other vocoder type of sounds instead of using uh granulate tour we can have a synthesizer that drives uh a synthesizer that that is driven by the pitch of one thing and then it kind of the filter format comes from another source so maybe like the verse lead so let's get that guy in here <laughs> And I want the carrier signal to be from three, I guess. And maybe mute that. Do 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 do. You know what knob are we tweaking right now? I have to to get this effect. I'm gonna set it up first. Ooh. So this is um, feeding into itself, mm -hmm. but we actually have to start with a synthesizer that is going to be adjusting this signal, this signal, because right now that's just the effect of the filter, mm -hmm. or the, the vocoder filter right now. But like if you try playing piano into it, for example, like I think now your keyboard will mm -hmm. work. Um one more time. Okay. Let me loop this thing. Where is my loop ability? Is that doing anything? Nope, not yet. Sweet. <laughs> do 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 do. Neck. Neck tie. Neck time. Oh. That's very funny. Well, there we go. There's our synth. This is a cool synth. So I want audio from you. Uh-huh. I see. And I want to carry it. What's the synthesizer? It's great. Nope. Oh, I see. This is doing pitch tracking and creating an oscillation out of that. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> That's beautiful. There we go. There you go. So what happened here with this vocoder? Uh, the vocoder is using the, like the format type information, mm -hmm. the actual, um, to drive this filter here. So here we have mm -hmm. 20 bands that are separated by a certain amounts. Um, and it takes the f like the amplitude from each of those sections of the filter, and it multiplies that against a like that is the carrier signal, or the car it multiplies it against the carrier signal. So the carrier is this analog over here, right? Our synthesizer, and there isn't even a filter. We can do effects and things like that over here, but instead, we're going to let that be driven by a vocoder. And a vocoder works the same way that your phone does. Um, the way that it's a lot, I guess it's a lot cheaper to send synthesizer information, like vocoded information, mm -hmm. which is just a combination of filters to recreate somebody's voice. Oh. Than it is to actually send audio, like vocoding as a signal is actually really old tech. 
So, I mean, that's another thing we can do with these samples. One thing I look forward to doing. Nice. Um, and this has a few interesting effects, like kind of really just shaping how much it interacts with the filter. But yeah, it requires that carrier signal to make noise. We can do. I wouldn't say precisely that Daft Punk style stuff, but they have that. I they have a similar idea. Neat stuff, right? <laughs> oh, I should probably get your snack time in there as well. So, actually, this is a good way to use uh, these guys. So, at the end of this guy, let's uh, have a launch after play next all the time following whatever the length of this thing is uh what is that four bars well you kind of got to trim it at um oh uh, yeah at four two in order to get it to play next so does that four oh gosh it's about four two so measure four, four beat two is beat about two. where this and then here I'll just go to the top. That comes in on three, uh, two, do, 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 one, two, three, bum. So it comes in on beat two. Mm, mm, three. It's e by waku waku to materu. Kondo wa nani kana. Snack time. So on two and three is a snack time. Oh, so this is one bar. So you got to do is you got to, uh, this is all the way through this audio stem here at the bottom that's being blocked by me. Right, what right. we want to do is just grab our triangle, the right triangle, oh, slide, it, slide it over to 4, 2, and here. that's where this ends. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I still need to do that. And this, this follow action will not, mm -hmm. uh, it'll, it'll follow that after this. So does that after 3 and 1 beat, I guess? Well, it four two is where you trigger the next loop. Right. Do do do. And then snack time. We have to start there. Yeah, so exactly. Good. And so then this thing will play for two beats. Just go to the previous one. We have a little bit of a weird chain loop. Zero, and that's not two, that's two. Enter. Du, 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 du. Mm. One, two. It's a little bit long. We're not warping it. Cool. Yeah, that works. Hello, cats. <laughs> What's up? Are our chairs comfortable? I need more of a delay. Something less medicine. Why do I always use that note? That's probably why it doesn't work. Two, 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 two. Oh, let's blend it. Oh, do, 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 do. There's something missing. It's a time problem. It's not a snack time problem. All right. What other samples do we have left? 
What other samples do we have left? Yeah, we have In the three-part harmonies. We have this, which <laughs> sounds like a zerg. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, oh, for vocoding the whole thing. That's what this is. Snack time. The best iteration of snack time left. What is so limiting? Uh, I should install the demo or light vision. So you know what, what's there and what isn't? Snack time. Yeah. I think that would be fun for the whole family. But we should adjust. <laughs> I've used granular. I don't know. So now I'm trying to avoid. There's a hard limit on number of tracks. I want to look at Ableton Live Light features now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not happy with with the with the stories I'm hearing. Yeah, I think that the standard edition, or even this crazy extreme edition, are kind of necessary to do a lot of the major production stuff. But right. <coughs> if you're just getting your feet wet, it's good to start with the trial. See what you can do. Ooh. Light is really really limiting. It's everything everything I've heard has kind of suggested that. It comes with um, comes with a lot of uh, these controller hardware, you know, kind of things. So you basically get a trial version that's gonna encourage you to update. You can use any VST or AUs. Oh, yeah. So you can still use uh, third-party AUs and VSTs in light, right? Yep. It comes with drum, instrument, and effect racks, which... The very basics. We're going to have to work with that, then. And meanwhile, mm. I've got to work on getting my own set imported for this weekend. Hey, do you want to make, like, DJ rack type stuff? Yeah, I would love that. Okay. We've only got about 20 minutes left, but... Let's get it going. I mean, I already talked to kind of... We talked about production stuff. Let's talk about yeah. DJing stuff, right? Well, I spoke briefly about... Um, like saving a preset for an audio rack, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like kind of uh, it's kind of the start of any beautiful endeavor. No, but what you really need, let's just do this. Let's say you have songs that you don't even warp, right? Well, I warp. I might warp them, but well, but like there are different tempos. You want to actually like preserve that through the course of. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. Well, like, check this out. A lot of my sets, I might want to have it warped and then just slowly adjust the tempo between them and have like an underlying beat or loop underneath, which is what I'm planning to do this Saturday at Akiba Fest in Little Tokyo. Oh, I was thinking about going to that actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm DJing that coveted 10 a.m. spot. Oh boy, I'll get so copy right with you. So when the doors open, you get to hear me spinning Anisan. All right. Um, well, what if you want to have a different time signature in different parts of your set? That's tricky, how do I do that? Yo. Over here on the rightmost section, um, our master, whatever mm -hmm. channel this is, channel strip, for each um, track that we have, and we can, you know, we can do as few or as many as we want of mm -hmm. these guys. Like, I'll delete all of these rows. I can duplicate and make new rolls all day. These are all duplicating row one. That's less interesting. Uh, they don't have to be called one, though. They can be called the intro in my super hot finish, right? By pressing nice. Command R. Pretty much anywhere you can rename stuff in live. Um, but what if I want maybe for the beginning, like if I'm playing around, I want the intro to always be, mm -hmm. I don't know, 100 BPM. 
Boom. So now when I hit that, that'll change up here. So okay. you just type that in? You could. You can also right-click it and change edit launch tempo. It does the same thing. And edit launch time signature. Yeah. And so 120, and then when I'm you know breaking down at the end, mm -hmm. I'll just rename it to do that example. It looks like we're doing a new line type of character, or an, uh, whatever, 140 BPM. Space BPM. It's like every text field. Now it turns all of these guys arrows. Or it turns all these arrows orange. All of these guys arrows, arrows and orange. So now our tempo, as you can see on the other side of the screen over here, whoa! So I make my mouse gigantic for effect. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the 120. Now that scene launches and that goes to 140. So that's the first thing you can do. You can also, of course, change the time signature. So it literally is just an over under value. I can go to three four. You can hear my um, metronome somewhere in the world. Now we'll switch it over a little faster, but we're going to, which is just weird. Let's like get our quantization back, maybe two bars so that I have a little bit of a lead time. What if I want to warp, but put something in a different time signature? How's that work? Because I got this song that's a sweet anime ending theme, but it's in 3-4, maybe even 6-8 time. I personally read it a little more as 6-8, but... Okay. Um, if I want to warp that into my set, maybe I make a horizontal stripe that is, you know, 6 8 time. Oh, interesting. Let's try it. Let's try it. I think you can also set the tempo, or you can set the time signature per clip. Mm, I think. That's pretty good. I'm not 100% on that. When you warp it, I'm fairly certain that's how that works. Let me find something that's weird. Do I have any weird samples? I think this one's in 6 8, right? Let me turn our stream off. Oh, I can hear myself on your computer. This is confusing. If I lean in, if I lean in, everyone's going to have a great time. <laughs> it's like when you hold two mirrors together. Simpler waveforms. So like, here you go. That sounds like 6-8. It's also like, this is the actual tempo. Could be in three, but really it comes off as. Yo, airdrop me that file. Let's let's sync it up. How do I this change file. these settings? It's probably 6-8. Predefined bar length in grid mode. Aeon upheaval, what do you mean? Alright, I'm gonna airdrop this to you. How does that work? I'm so scared. Have you never done this? Nope. I'm gonna get You gotta open control center, turn on airdrop. Control center? Mm-hmm. Is it where or go to actually what? go to airdrop in Finder. This thing? Okay. You got to turn it on. Um, this thing. Yeah. Is that is that not on? That's on. Do is your Bluetooth on? Yes, it is. Is that? It says on a Mac. Ask them to go to AirDrop in Finder. Oh, uh, I guess here. Yes, I found it. So you can uh, say, allow me to be discovered. There I am. Cool. This is weird. Fun stuff. <laughs> also, why the need hell? Help. What is a Mac? the hell did that audio come back? Weird. It's mysterious. Okay, when you record, and want the length to stop or loop, plus overdub at four dollar. Oh, predefined bar length in grid mode. Oh, okay, okay. So that's where we... Um, cool, the Twitch mute button doesn't work. Nice. Fun discovery. All right. <laughs> so, so I still don't see you here. That is where we actually have... I just want to kind of recap for Aeon Upheaval, where we have a loop 
that while listening to my own voice like 20 seconds delayed is super distracting yeah it's really weird it's all right let's see let's get something quick so here what i can do is i have what is this a 16 bar looking thing i'm gonna warp it i'm gonna loop it i know it's 16 bars i'm not worried too much about the way that we interpret this i'm not seeing you in here no I see Matt and I see Tommy. Okay, Do I have to click on me. you? Am I am I discovered? Allow me to be discovered by contacts only. Should I send it to Try everyone? everyone? Okay. Let's see if they that are. Works. Cool. I guess we're not contacts. I'm sorry, dude. Um. Anyway, I want to change this loop to one bar. Sorry. Okay, are you getting a request from me or not? I am not. Okay, there we go. Hey, I'll accept and open this mysterious Woo! song. Nice. Now it's been sent. Cool. Sneaker net has evolved. I suppose we could call it 3-4 in terms of how it might mash up with uh, other tempos, right? Yeah. This is way off. Oh, uh, we got a warp, right? And what's this tempo again? What's this tempo thing? They really loud? Yeah, it's super crushed. Oh, yeah, I know. This was mastered at a great... Uh, Mastered at turn it all the way up. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Let's get our starting point and kind of test my tap tempo ability. I'm a tap tempo here too. I win. Now, this is three four over there on your. Yes. Should uh, I switch it up to six eight? No, see if three that four works? is fine. I'm gonna go with it. I'm okay. gonna use it too. But how do I get this on mine to reflect the same way when I pull this up? So make sure that the default setting for your track is everything that you import if you guys go into um if you go to audio i believe no record warp launch make sure that nothing warps by default so i just did the same thing that tommy's doing and what I do moved, i make uh, sure nothing happens by default don't don't uh, go to your settings mm -hmm. um and make sure that nothing is warped by default i know i always warp uh, by default i love it it's it's so crazy no no warping no warping one shot no mm -hmm. warping loops, no no warping at all. I want to tell Ableton when I want to warp audio because I might be taking audio that's already processed by somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so should be about right. Also, how did I get this? Uh, how did we get that cool tempo tap macro going? So now that it isn't warped, I can actually tap along with it. Um, for, let's review that for our dudes in chat. Um, our chat heads. The wait, when you pull forward, sorry, we're unable to. I'm I'm unconnected to chat. Ayana, people, I want to handle your request very shortly. I swear. Um, we have no time. We have five minutes. But I want to tell Tommy how to do this because it's going to be super helpful for him. Did you set up the keyboard macro? I did. You did. That's how you do it. So I have Command K. If you look at my window here. I have this kind of tilde-ish button set up for tap tempo. It's mm -hmm. in a similar position on my keyboard as it is on the screen. And there we go. Um, once you feel like you've gotten pretty close, you can hit the warp button and see how the grid that it generates aligns with your song. Make sure that you set the starting point to the same spot. I can tell you right now that this is going to drag a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and we can see that come up in here. And so what I want to do there is not make a warp point, but drag everything over at that downbeat after about eight bars. And that should slide, that should line everything up. There's only one way to know for sure, and that's by throwing the tempo way the heck out of place. Um, so this is not what I want. I want complex mode. What the?
That's way off. Mine? Uh, mine is. Mine's pretty good. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Beautiful. So, I really have to get to eyeing up people's question. We're running really quickly out of time. Let's go for it. But I have, um, so let's take this and I'm going to duplicate it really quickly. I'm going to go and work this area here where we want to play the same section a few times um, to figure out how to predefine the bar grid length in the grid. So what we'll do is we'll make a loop that we are satisfied with. Bloop, 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 bloop. And I will click the loop button to highlight that region. I think uh, four bars of this will be plenty fine. And I will take our previous one here and I will start at that playback point. Bloop, right there. And uh, I'll just move this below. Let's change our launch type for the sky, our loop. And after playing this eight times, I just want you to go to the next guy. Nice. Uh, we've eight zero. And I don't know why. Let's do no action for the first and play next for the second. This ratio thing is very confusing to me. It's like this or that. It's supposed to work as like a weird probabilistic se sequencer type of thing and be cool. But that always works for me to use the second button here. So we can see here the number of times it's playing. Three. And that's how you do it. So it'll loop for eight bars, in other words, twice. And then all we have to do is set this time. Ah, uh, looks like our triangle is off by a beat. Yep. It was a feature, not a bug. <laughs> True. So following the action of 16, um, 16 bars, or 16, yeah, mm -hmm. 16 measures, we're good to go. Now what if we want this to loop until we trigger the next one? Do we just do that manually? Yeah. So we just don't even bother with a follow action, we just go... Uh, so what I would do... Does this even make noise? I'm afraid. So I would take this. Mm -hmm. I would turn this, uh, this follow action off. So mm -hmm. what I have for this guy, just turn that one to zero. And so this will loop indefinitely. And that'll give us time to like mess around here and maybe change our tempo to, you know, let's say 200 BPM or something obnoxious. That's an what's example. Your, um, uh. What's your trick for reconciling a 3 4 and a 4 4 set? I use math. I mean, you've got 3 4 as your time signature here at the top. Right. But the clip is the clip is three four. Most of my set's gonna be four four though. I'm using ah, a lot of pop songs, right? So my tempo at the top's gonna be four four. Let's what do we up. do with these three four songs? Well, let's change our tempo back, and the clip's time signature will actually mm -hmm. be what we what we warped it in as right here mm -hmm. on the left in our clip section. So let's play a clip that is in four four, next to a clip that is not, and see what happens. So this is warped, and that nice. is warped. I see. Is this a loop in three though? Oh, let's change that. Let's get a let's get a four four loop to see what we got. So I guess really it comes down to number of beats. And yeah. you have to divide against that. That means that for some sections your length is probably not going to be what you expect? I think in order to get the same feel though, like, I want to switch this back up. And this well, is it seems fast. like if I wanted to pair this with a loop, I'd need to find something else that was in three and also set that to warp at three, four, and set the clip signature as such. This is so fast. Right? Well, because another thing is, how many bars do you need until you get to something that feels good in four, right? It also depends on how much I want to warp it versus just letting it play out at its normal tempo. Because if you have something that ends, you may just want to go for it. 
So I'm going to play this by ear, but I'm not sure if I should keep things at their original tempo or be a little more uh, exploratory and start doing this with it, you know. Granted, it's going to sound a little more... Uh, it's hmm. going to sound a little more accessible and commercial than it's going to sound experimental. But, for example, mixing background music with drum and bass is always a fun... I think uh, this one and a half bar thing works out, though, depending on the pattern. Like, you're going to have yeah. to definitely play with... Like, this happens to have a weird, like, six-beat sequence. Mm -hmm. Are there any packs you know of that have really good, like, three, four loops or six, eight loops? I don't know. I usually make loops. Yeah. So I have no idea. Um, but after, yeah... This kind of multiplying will give you, will get you out of that time problem. Yeah. If I have a measure of three four, then that will fit across one and a half measures, right? Of uh, four four. Mm -hmm. Or like I think it's, I can't remember how I used to do it. It's like twelve bars instead of sixteen. Um, makes a really big difference. That actually that kind of comes across okay. Oh, here we go. Beatles transition. Also, glitchy, glitchy beats are uh, really true. easy to truncate, right? Right, right. I mean, or you can also do like a, like a reverb, like completely dry out, like one time signature and go back. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm sorry there, Xbox. Yeah, but yeah, Gary and saying go without, use, use no beats. Oh, 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 oh. I've got a solution for you. Yeah? I do, I do, I do, I do. So instead of having a beat that, um... You should, you should try using a dub beat. Instead of having a beat that hits on two and four, use a beat that hits on three. Oh, that's a good idea. Do, do, go. Yeah. I think that'll help. Like, let me see if I can make something really quickly. That's alright. dead out of time. We're out of time. We can, we can explore this later, but... Yeah. It's mostly just kind of, how do you turn this into silly putty? And that's right. the kind of exploring that... Uh, Ableton is really, really good for. I highly recommend it. Yeah, whatever you are. I wonder if I can do that. One. It's like that. You. Record. You record right now. That's pretty good. There you go. Do it. There we go. So cutting it to three or six beats, even if it's an eight bar, uh, eight bar loop, can be a really good way to work something like that out, right? Seems seems like it works. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Do it can't really hear that at home, but basically, if you line up chunks of things, you can often really exploit those uh, excellent meters. So yeah, this is like the solution I offer for you for that. Because we're subdividing where two and four would be mm -hmm. by pushing the clap onto three. Oh yeah. So this is a proper six over four, essentially. Right. And that's going to be That's the way. a pretty great effect, too. Because that way, yeah. Basically, you turn that compound meter into triplets over mm -hmm. a four beat, something like that. Wow. I got to talk to you more about that. But that's totally... Fun stuff. This is the solution that I have. Uh, drum rack as a launcher. You use a uh, drum rack and launch pad is amazing. Use simpler in, mono, in Ableton, like that comes with live light. I can feel undubbing on that. Oh, it probably is dubbing. There you go. Well, that's got some. Start me over. Yeah. This is live. I'm live undoing you. So you can see, like. I wonder if I can live quantize as well. Oh, 
want to see you quantize that. All 16, straight as possible. Let's go. There are no notes there. I just, I think that's, that's the answer. Audio to MIDI. Oh, so what I'm saying for for the live for the live light folks, you're only gonna have these instruments. You're gonna have you're gonna have simpler, and you're gonna have a drum rack, and you might have an instrument rack. I think, right? Simpler, you can turn into a pretty disturbing synthesizer. I like this. Like what we did with the voices at the beginning. I like this take from uh, Alon. Simpler can be pretty crazy yeah. if you cut the length of a sample. You can make almost any waveform to a synth sound. My hero right there, exactly what I was saying. And um, that is the answer. You can put simpler, you can put a bunch of simplers in a drum rack, you can do very complicated stuff. And you should be able to make pretty intense sequences. I know that there's a limit of uh, actual audio tracks, I think. Maybe not anymore. But I'm sure not the number of clips. This is a weird effect. I wonder if you can hear us. Anyway, um, we're gonna go over to Rockstar Academy here in a second. That's right. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for a little help. Gary is handling everything in chat. Um, please forward questions. Let us know what you want. And where do you want to go? I want to know how your DJ set goes. I'll probably go see you this weekend. Yeah, come check it out. If you're in Los Angeles, come to Akiba Fest in Little Tokyo. I'll be on at 10 a.m. And we'll also have a whole day of Anisan and J-pop DJs from our group, Tune in Tokyo. Cool. Uh, group I've worked with for maybe five, six years now. Oh, nice. But I'm going to be doing my set entirely in Ableton. So if you are... Um, now I'm going to have to do a lot of this work, actually, tonight when I get home. Uh, I'll have to do a lot of what we just did right now. And uh, once I do, we'll use all these tips and tricks to kind of turn this into putty, and I might call you for advice. So Absolutely. I, I want to see how, I don't know, if we can, show everyone how your set comes together and like what that project file looks like. I usually just hit record when I start a live set, and words and all, that way I have it saved. That's the coolest thing about DJing with Ableton, uh. by the way. Hit, go to the very start of it, hit record, and then just start. That's got a beat. Know, you start go. with a loop or something, right? Yeah, start with our beat. It's like hit record now. And it also it also Turn gives you ideas later, out. like oh man, you go back, you play through it, you go oh this was this was a good idea. This right. part didn't work. I don't know what I was thinking there, and I need to get some more loops and some more beats that yeah. work for me. So that's kind of how it that's goes. Right. Good. Let's get out of here. Is he ready to go? Looks like we're ready for Rockstar Academy. Cool. Our micro groove has been saved. All right. Sweet. Rockstars. We'll see you all next week. See you in a minute. Now it's time for Rockstar Academy with Sam Lustig. I'm just live writing something. Are you guys going to get into your workflow? Yes, we will. Um, I think this time around we should make a theme song for Yeah, we should get our show. We should get our show together and, and definitely make something a lot nicer than, than our made up intro although I, you know had a good start <laughs> we'll make a theme for little help in ableton live starting next week i think that'll be our project but yeah gary and i is asking if we're going to do uh workflow and writing tracks um yeah why not i mean i'd love to sit here and you know knock out a track in an hour or less yeah